Good evening, my friends. I will uh, wait to build an audience and make sure that everything is uh, hooked up. And uh, I've got some, um, I want to talk about grief. I want to talk about things that we've been dealing with on the page. Um, I think it's really important that we we talk about it head on because it's um, difficult. It's very difficult. And if you, you follow us, you know that we had on the page an article from the Huffington Post that reported um, about the hundreds of dead seabirds and sea lions washing up on beaches in California and dying marine animals and birds. And they've been washing up en masse on the shores of Southern California beaches. I mean, it's, it's, it's tough stuff. It's definitely not easy to deal with. And that's what I wanted to talk about tonight because sometimes I think people People think it's like a, like a depression and it is not depression what we're going through. We read these articles and it's not depression, it's grief. And we're in a grieving mode. Every time we read about an animal or a birds or wildlife, we're grieving because you're here with me, you are grieving because you tuned into the broadcast to hear me talk about this. I don't know who's with me. I just know I had to talk about it tonight because that was one of the articles on the page this week that has gotten, I'd say, <laughs> hundreds of shares and comments. And because of that, I just think it was really important to come on and share our feelings. So, hi, Cindy. So, what I'm going to start with tonight, I'm going to read something, and uh, we'll go from here. I belong to a lot of pages. I read, read, read all the time, and you all know that. But I'm going to read something Maybe a couple of things that I, I want to start with before we discuss this. I won't put the person's name. I just kind of want to know what you guys, you know, feel and think. I'm glad you're joining me, Cindy. This person writes, and I can't say that the person is not feeling something I've been feeling. In a state of shock today, reading all the updates from the Arctic, there is a likelihood that the sea ice will be gone now either by this September or next one at the latest. In no more than a year from now, the only unbroken bit of whiteness on at the top of our blue-green planet will be the last remnants of the Greenland ice sheets. The IPCC predicted an ice-free Arctic would not happen until 2080. They're going to lose their credibility at the same speed as the melting uh, cryosphere. They can't complain. They are connived at this in return for funding. Maybe there was no other way uh, to survive. Maybe it was necessary pragmatism, whatever. It probably wouldn't have saved us if they had played the game any other way. And it, in light of how fast things are moving, it probably doesn't really matter now. We got lucky with the weather in previous years and dodged the clathrate, which is methane gun. We may be out of luck this summer. The jet screams are screwed. A massive heat uh, dipole straddles the remaining ice from the Pacific and Atlantic sides. 
ice is shit out of luck. Polar bears, seals, cod are out of luck. Well, many of us did feel that this year or last year were the last years of normal or Holocene conditions. It's hitting me hard in the gut how right we were. And now the U.S. satellite monitoring will go offline just as the sea um, ice enters its final stages. Are we surprised? Our culture has never wanted to know about the living world. Why should it pay attention to its death? I'm not even scared. I just feel immense and overwhelming grief. Overwhelming grief. There is no more doubt about what we have done. The immensity of our achievements. We have terraformed this earth so much. We have switched off plan the planetary thermostat. We really did that. We unplugged the freezer. So here we are, witness to the greatest show on earth, the lucky witnesses. But it also sucks. And none of the joys of the Schneidenfraud of Gaia getting revenge on stupid humans will make up for it. It's dredge, wet and foggy here today. But I'm abandoning work for the day and going for a walk to find some peace among the trees, to contemplate life, to be grateful and sad and all philosophical and shit. Wishing my fellows in, in the world well and a big cyber hug to you all. May all beings find peace in these troubled times. I found that to be inspirational and beautiful and, and quite telling. Although that grief, that grief, I feel it every day. And at, at, at one point, I thought it was depression. Then I realized it's not depression. I'm not depressed. Are any of you depressed? It's a grief for what we know is happening. And we see it because we are here. And of course it's sad. But you know, that grief is something I've been talking about lately. Talking about ugh, turning the grief around and saying because we are feeling this grief that we truly are the lucky ones or the chosen ones or whatever you want to say because we know what is happening we understand and we and we are taking that grief and we are embracing it because it's a feeling that is actually born out of love it's a feeling that's born out of love and it's a feeling that that shows that each and every one of you that are here with me, that we care. Now, we don't really know how long or what's going to happen. We really don't. We're not fortune tellers. We know that the ice is going. We know that there's a lot of problems. We uh, see it every day. But what I am going to say to you, everybody that follows us, is that we're still going to bring you the best of the best, the hope of the hope, the articles about, about technology, um, mitigation, adaptation. We're not going to change. It's just that I feel like so many people are grieving and, and feeling things that they don't understand. We don't understand in ourselves and we mistake for depression and it's not, it's not. I think we're woke. I do think that's what it is. We're awake to what's going on. And yeah, it's sad, but we don't live every day like that. I don't live every day, every day worrying or sad. I celebrate those things that are beautiful around me. I have beauty all around me and anywhere 
you want to look. Even if you live in a city and it's concrete, you're going to find some natural beauty somewhere, even if it's one tree. Even if it's just one tree. So there's another person that had written something and she wrote, and this was another interesting piece. She asked, and I'm going to take this off because I think this is also pretty interesting. She asked, um, and she said she's been thinking about it for a while. And she says, in terms of climate, society, ecosphere, energy resources, and so on, it seems pretty clear cut that as a race, we're going to see extreme population decline soon, if not outright distinct extinction. My question is, does anyone ever feel like they might have been radicalized themselves, for want of a better word? I mean that in terms of coming to the conclusion that we all share, that in, we are in the minority because other people refuse to listen or because we've convinced ourselves through extensive study, mainly online in her case and my case, and, and that we know something that everyone else doesn't? Maybe I'm not being 100% clear here, but for example, when we say that the IPCC projections for climate change are way off, is that the truth? Or have we convinced ourselves that it is? I sometimes feel like I slipped down a similar rabbit hole to the ones that 9-11 truthers and chemtrails believers have. Objectively, I know these people may be wrong, but then many would say the same about people that feel like it's the end times. I guess she's saying she's just trying to uh, apply the same rigor to her beliefs in the area as, as she would to any other. And she can't come up with an argument other than wait and see. But we're not going to just wait and see. We're going to live every single thing, every day to the fullest. We're going to plant our gardens. We're going to do the things that we do. We're going to go to work every day and do the best job that we can. And we're going to love everybody around us. And we're going to try to make sure that we do that every day. And we take that grief that we have and we celebrate it because we feel it. Because we are those lucky ones that are awakened to it. And if we are lucky enough, to keep going. And we do find ways to mitigate the things that are going on. Then we are pretty lucky, aren't we? And our children and their children's children may just be living a different life than we are, a different plan. A, 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 it'll be a different planet. People can say human beings are, are bad or they can celebrate being human. We know that we have uh, people that believe in near-term human extinction, and they believe that, you know, we know that cl climate change is human created. Those that don't want to see it, they're in denial. You know what denial is? It's a very big defense mechanism, and we all have it in some way. So, what I wanted to say tonight is if you do feel grief or if those articles um, that I post and, 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 and put up, if they upset you, turn it around and be grateful for the grief. Be grateful that you were here. Be grateful that you got to witness the tremendous gifts that the earth has given us. And if Mother Earth, Gaia, is truly finished with us? Well, we would we have existed. We've lived. But it's how you choose to live. And that's really so important. So I just wanted to share this this evening. Let's see what James says. James says it's not too late. It'll be hard to move forward. Um, with hurdles in front of us, 
working together, great things can be done. People are beginning to move and make change. My effort has 112 people from seven states now. I am just some guy. You can make change too. And James, you are making change. James won a, a contest, but they are creating a solar panel movement for people that can't afford solar panels. And they're asking for people to invest and come along with them. And so actually I'm looking into what James is doing because I think it's incredible. So as I wanted to talk to you about the, the grief and the bad feelings, there are other ways to look at all these things. James is coming up with mitigation. James is, James is one of those people that is a mover and a shaker. And James is wonderful. I was so happy when I first heard from James the first time before he even won. Kim says, told my sister, all it takes is one person to make change. That's right. One person. One person. And Brenda's saying, we are the change. We are the change. And you guys that are here with me and you follow our page, you follow other people that are also you know, beautiful people like Claudia and, and, and others that are saying that this, this grief and, and this fear should not, it shouldn't be fear. Yes, it's unknown. It's an unknown territory. But we've always gone through unknown territories, haven't we? And haven't we come out the other side? I think we have. And Rebecca says, thank you for sharing your feelings. We may have no idea what may come, but we have each other for support. And that means so much when you're feeling isolated, alone, and sad. You never have to be isolated, alone, and sad. Even if you look outside, even if you have cats <laughs> like I do, you never have to be alone. Plus, we have our online togetherness, you know, we have each other. So basically, I think I've, 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 um, I've said what I needed to. And Yvonne, yes, we can't unknow what we know. But like I said, we can embrace that grief and know that that's because of the kind of people we are and the kind of hearts we have. I think it's pretty easy. I think it's really sad. Yes, sometimes it's really sad. And the most I feel sad for, because of the animals. I feel sad for the animals because they are the innocents in what human beings have done. However, we have someone like James. And there's a lot of Jameses. And I think that we're going to be all right. No matter what happens, the Arctic's going to melt. We don't know how that's going to affect us. The scientists have some ideas, but let's not be fearful. Okay? We're going to go on every day. And I'm still going to share the articles I share. And you might still get upset, but I'm going to educate. going to do it. But I'm here with you. And I don't plan on going anywhere. Not for a while. So I'm going to do my usual. Love all you guys. Marsha, she's with us too. Thank you all. Embrace your grief because you earned it because of the people you are and the hearts that you have. Good night. Peace, as I always say, peace. And I really do love you all. Good night, guys. <laughs>